many hairs. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's live video. I'm here with Ali from Ali K Design and she is gonna walk us through how to draw a modern floral. So yes. um, welcome Ali, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Um, so for anybody who's watching live, sorry for that technical malfunction, this program just kicked us out for a minute. We had a minor panic, but um, everything's back up and running, so hopefully it doesn't kick us off again. And um, yeah, so Ali, for anybody who doesn't know who you are, can you just give, a, give us a little rundown of who you are, what you do, where you're from, yeah. that kind of stuff? I'm the hands and heart behind Ali K Design. I'm based at Dallas, Texas. And I will go over my new book. It's new-ish. It's not for a year called How to Draw Modern Florals. And we'll be talking about how to draw one of those flowers inside that book. And then I'm actually coming out with another book in December. And it's just an expansion of how to draw modern florals, more project-based. Like how to, now that you know how to draw flowers, like how to create a project or composition things like that nice so how long have you been doing this like what's your background so I graduated and couldn't find a job outside of a school I graduated with a marketing degree and decided to pick up doing art for friends and family and things around my apartment and people started loving it and then they actually wanted to pay me for it which was a little weird so um, I started off with doing that then it turned into wedding invitations because I found that that's where like, the big money is at um, and kind of got tired of that and I, I'm pretty sure I did my own mural for my studio which is kind of weird like, everything that I've kind of involved into I've done for myself and then posted about it and people are like, oh, I want that too. So um, I did my first mural on my own studio, and then it just kind of skyrocketed. I just got done painting a Lululemon um, here in Dallas. Painted three murals, so it's been it's been fun. Just kind of seeing where my art has taken me. Yeah, for sure. That's really cool. So, like, what's your your day to day? Like, do you do murals most of the time? Is that the like biggest part of your job or what, what are your it, average days at, look like? At the moment, it goes through weird stages. So I also paint hand leather jackets, which are a lot of fun. So I typically have anywhere from five to seven kits that I paint a month. Um, so it's either I'm painting a leather jacket or I'm creating art for a mural or painting a mural every most of the days is consistent of answering emails which is part of the business um but it just it depends every single day is different which is which is fine yeah for sure so you you said like the beginnings of your your art-ish career I guess you were yeah. doing like like calligraphy and lettering too or just it yeah. was mostly okay that's how it started yeah, and the hand lettering. and I started getting tired of just doing lettering, so I decided to doodle some more florals. And then a publisher actually approached me about creating a book, and I was like, "Sure, why not?" So we did that, and it's just been amazing. So have you seen like huge growth since you did the book? Oh, definitely. I think majority of like my followers are from the people buying my book and sharing the book and it's just like this crazy web of interaction and creativity and I mean people are buying it all over the world which is just mind-blowing yeah it's so cool like and yeah. the, the fact that that many people are interested in learning modern florals which obviously they are since you're here in this group ready to teach people yeah so, it definitely um, inspired a lot of people there's tons of like challenges I know like florals your way started from my book there's another challenge going around right now I think it's like WTF florals um and they're doing a challenge and the girls that are hosting that are really like hey you don't really know how to draw flowers pick up this book so it's just I mean people are the nicest and I sometimes feel like I don't deserve it but <laughs> I'm super grateful for all of these people and shout out and collaborations and people I'm, I'm just so amazed at how following someone that started with my book and like a couple just a couple of months later and seeing the transpirations of their florals and putting their own spin on it and their own style it 
makes my heart just so happy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's actually, it's interesting that you bring up florals your way and WT florals. Cause both of like two of the girls that are doing that, um, are Ottawa girls. So I know both of them in real yeah. life, which is great. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're so nice. Yeah. So we'll have to link to those, those challenges in the show notes for anybody who wants to take part in those. But, um, I think we should just like jump right in and start Let's actually do doing the stuff. So, um, I'll let you play with your camera there a little bit and the, yeah. I'm going to switch it now. So it'll only show you on the screen, but you should still be able to hear my voice and I can call out any questions that might come up as you're doing this. Perfect. All right. So a little bit about the book. Um, so this is the cover. It is a step-by-step -step instructional book on, again, how to draw modern florals. And there's cacti in there as well. And you'll see they're broken into steps like so. So we're going over the poppy. It's broken down into four steps. Obviously, the shorter the steps, the easier the flower more steps, the harder the flower. Um, but it's super simple. There's words, there's pictures. So it covers a lot of um, learning. What do you call it? Um, not strategies, but techniques. If you're a visual, lear yeah, visual learner or you like to read something. So it's all that fun. But I'm going to switch my camera. It's a little funky, but hopefully y'all can see it. Can you see it? Ali, do you happen to have a different uh, Wi-Fi connection or anything? Because it seems like people are saying in the comments that it's really blurry and sort of choppy. They can't really understand what you're saying. Oh, no. Should I take my... Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah. Is it better or worse? That's better. Yep. Okay. I'm just not going to use my... And then, good? Yeah, and then can you just move your camera a little closer to your hands? Good. A little closer if you can. Yeah, that's good. I think we should be better now. Yeah, everybody's saying that it's better. Yeah, Perfect. okay, we're back on track. <laughs> Yay, sorry. No, no worries. We're professionals here. <laughs> Um, so I'm using microns. These are the pens that I use just every day, drawing, anything, doodling, to-do notes. Um, I like to use two different sizes. They're typically like a 0.3 or a 0.1 or a 0.05. I'm not going to use a 0.05 for this section just because it's video and it's really hard to uh, read those lines because it's really fine like the smaller the number the smaller the lines but we're gonna go ahead and start so we're drawing a poppy and we're it's going to be like the side of a poppy and we're gonna start with the middle hopefully I can see because I cannot see the camera so the middle of a poppy has kind of like this dome shape to it so you're just gonna draw a C and then lines down below, that's creating the dome. Can you move your camera a little closer, Ali? You know, that's, we've asked you a couple times to do that. I don't know how close you actually are onto your paper in real life, but. It's pretty close. If I do it any closer, my pen will hit my camera. Okay, <laughs> okay. And then move your paper. Yeah, there we go, perfect. Right there? Yeah. Sorry, I cannot see what's over. Is there. that good? Yeah, that's good. Awesome. So now we're going to draw like the hair like center and it's just random lines. You can make them 3D or little like so here's like a straight line or you can make them more, I don't even know what you call these. They're like just little ovals and just keep going all the way around making them different heights. And then little dots here. I don't really think too much about this. The ones that I see people overthink them, they look like crap. So just really just kind of go making it a little wild. Here you're kind of losing the dome shape. So we're going to come back and make 
the dome have a little bit of a shade so it stands out. And now we're going to add the petals. So we're doing a side of a flower. I start with the petal that's facing you first. So we're going to draw the top of the poppy. And you're just going to make a wave. And then connect it to the center. And then draw another C. So this is the side of a petal. So this is like the bottom part of that petal. And then we're going to draw three more petals. We're drawing this one. So this is kind of like the base. So these other petals have a starting and ending point to them. So now you have a center and petals. So technically you just drew a flower, but we're going to make it a little bit more exciting. I like to add folds to my flowers. So in order to do that, you just kind of draw a curve to whichever petal you would like. So I did this side petal. So this, so like this is the underside of the petal and this would be the underside of the petal. Hopefully that makes sense. You can add some more center. For shading, this is where I switch to the smaller pin. And with shading, it's really important that all of your shading lines are connected to the center. So if we take this petal right here, we want to start from the center and work our way up. But for like these lines, we don't want to go straight down here. We want to curve them back to the center. Hopefully y'all can see that. Yep. And so like if for this petal, we come out. And so on here, we want to make sure that we're facing it back to the center. Like so. And we want to make sure that we're not doing like a tall, skinny, tall, skinny pattern. You want them to be as random as possible, I imagine? Yes. Gotcha. So for the underside of the folds, obviously we can't make it go towards the center. So they're just going to be tick marks upwards, like so. And you just do this all the way around. And then for the tops, you can just kind of add little tick marks like that. And we're going to lose our center again, adding in these details. So just come in, darken it. And there you have a pop. Beautiful. It's it's um it just just got choppy again. Like I, it's it sort of got blurry again. It was perfect the whole time you were drawing, and then it just got blurry again. So, but um, we will take a picture of that and put it in the in the blog post that goes with this too, so everyone can see the final result. But that looks awesome. Yay! So if you were um trying to learn different styles and stuff like different other florals. And obviously people can just also get your book, but if you were like you personally wanted to learn other styles of florals and stuff like that, did you just actually find flowers in real life or pictures of flowers and kind of take those basics and apply them to any different flower? Or how did you kind of learn all the different ones? Definitely. I try 
to find inspiration from real flowers just because if you're looking at other people's illustrations, then their style is kind of not on purpose, but really kind of embedded into your brain of like, oh, this is how she drew it, which is kind of weird for me to say that because I'm teaching people how to draw florals and they're looking at my illustrations and flowers, but trying to expand on my own style, looking at real flowers is, is the best way to get that inspiration and to like really break down the curves and looking at the lines of the petals, like that's where you can like see which direction your detail shading line should go, things like that. Yeah, so, and I think that's like really interesting. It's just hard, I think, as a beginner looking at a picture of a flower and trying to imagine it in like a line drawing form. So do you have any, I know you said that when you're drawing little details in the flower that they should always point back to the center, but do you have any other like one-off tips like that that you found really useful when you were getting started? That one for sure is the most, um, like the most common error mistake that I like see from people. Other than that, it's just like breaking it down into like shapes, like really complex flowers can be broken down really into basic shapes and forms. And then once you break it down, you can kind of like sketch it. So like, if you break it down, oh crap. And say like, this is your daisy, like these are your two basic forms. And then this is your center. And then you can really focus on your petals and then working your way around that. Yeah. So when you, um, I know you talk about this a bit in your book, um, but when you do stuff like that, would you draw those first couple shapes with pencil and then start with the pen? Definitely. Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. And uh, as far as tools go, do you mostly always use microns or do you have other things that you prefer to? Microns are typically my go-to pens. Um, I know I'm friends with Peggy from Pigeon Letters and Kelly Creates, and they just came out with their own pins. Um, so I've been using, and I've been throwing those in the mix as well. Just any pin that comes in two different sizes or any pin that has a variation in a thin line and a thick line is typically what I'll use or what anyone can use. So like a ballpoint pin might be great for detail lines but you want like a thicker more felt hit pin for your other ones gotcha and that just adds contrast gotcha gotcha um okay so we have a good question from jennifer and um i'm not sure if you if you want to switch your camera back to your face you can because i think most of the questions coming up now are going to be more um more basically you don't really need to demonstrate them but um so she asked she, she said, hi, Ali, I have your book, which is amazing. The biggest struggle for me is shading and details. Is there such a thing as too much shading? I feel like I always add too much. How do you decide it's enough? I, yeah, there definitely is a point to where you get too far gone and then you lose that detail. So like when I was saying, like we kind of lost the detail of the center and then you like go back and kind of have to like shade it back in. So actually I'm going to switch it back. Can you all see that? Yeah, it's a bit blurry again, but it should click in in a second. Maybe. I don't know how to focus on here. I don't think it's the focus. I think it's just the connection is a little bit slow. Is it still blurry? Yeah. Oh, wow. it's all right. So if you look at your petals and you are shading them, how about this? Is that blurry? Yeah, it's still blurry. I'm not sure what the problem is. It's like Facebook isn't clicking in or something. 
It's a, so if you're doing too many on one petal, then you might lose your outlines of the petals, so like the overlapping. So if the petal is, so like this is your top petal and this is your bottom petal, and you start to lose this curve, then add more shading lines to this bottom petal because it's going to be, if you think of like the direct light hitting your petals, the bottom petal is going to have more shading lines because it's underneath another petal versus a petal that's going to be direct to the sunlight. It's going to have a little bit less shading lines, if that makes any sense. Yep. And actually you're getting clearer right now. So I don't know if you wanted to demonstrate that or. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. It's better. It's better than it was. So like this petal is closest to the sun versus these two petals. So adding more shading lines here and here is going to make this puddle pop. Okay, yeah. You, this, you're... this puddle will have less detailed lines than the, this puddle. Cool, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and then another one that's really good, um, Megan asked, what do you do if you accidentally go past your petal line when you're adding the details? Asking oh, for a friend. No. That's, that's a little bit worse. I'm like, dang it. Um, just go with it. The one thing I love is that the jolly nature, like in nature, it's not perfect. So that's why I'm able to like have confidence and draw flowers and plants and things like that because I can just be like yep this is how my plant's gonna look because in real life that could it could be crooked and it could look that way so um just being able to like take that imperfections in nature and know that my flower doesn't have to be perfect because it can be wobbly and wompy and look flat because it could look like that in real life you never know do you ever, like, if you extended past that last petal, would you ever just add another petal behind it? Like, just make the flower bigger, essentially? Depending I mean, on which what the style really is, cool. I guess. So are you saying, like, if this petal line, like, extended past? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, like, I guess if it was, like, this, you could just add another petal but I would make it have some symmetry. And keep going. So like if you add another petal, you're gonna have to add like another layer of petals. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. There's tons of ways to like not throw it away try to like come up with like that creative thing of like, okay, how can I make this work type thing? And do you ever, would you ever go back around and add like a thicker line around any of the petals? I found that I've seen some people that kind of do that as part of their style. You can. So like, if you feel like you're like, if these still aren't having enough contrast, you can come back and add that other line to make it pop, just like right here. Yeah, for sure. Love it. But that's all, that's all in your own, like, if that's your style, go for it. Cool. So um, if anyone else has any questions, other questions, feel free to toss them in the comments. But um, for now, I'm just curious, like, if you... Someone tells you sit down and draw a flower. What's the first one that comes to your mind? What's the first one you draw? Probably a poppy or an anemone. I really like that distinct, like one, they come black and white, which is my favorite colors. But I really like having that distinct center and those distinct, nice, ovally, curvy petals. Love that. And when you go to do them on, I'm just like, throwing questions at you because they're hitting my brain. But um, when you go to do a mural somewhere, what, um, like, what's the difference? Do you use paint pens or what do you use to actual paint brushes and stuff when you're doing florals? Because then you got to get the different sizes kind of the same. Yeah, it's definitely a mixture. So obviously there's different sizes in paint pens and there's different sizes in paint brushes. So having that different size of a contrast, you always want 
your thin lines to be a thinner, your detailed lines to be thinner, and then your outer lines to be thicker. Um, so it really just depends on the wall. If it's like a really big stucco, a lot of texture, obviously I can't use a paint pen, um, but I'll use a paintbrush or foam brush. But if it's like an interior wall, then there are paint pens that I like to use and things like that. I don't, I can't pronounce the name of it, um, but I'll get with you and show you them. They're like in my closet over there. Yeah, I'll um I'll put a, a link to all the tools that you mentioned in the in the blog yeah. post too. Um, so someone else is asking if you have any tips for how like building up a bouquet or a wreath, and I know that's in your book, but just like off the top of your head, if you have any um, quick tips for people when they're trying to do that, because I know it's the same thing where you can see a picture of one flower, but when you try and put them all together, it can be really overwhelming. It is. It's actually in my second book, like really detailed step by step. So pre-order it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Comes out in December. But there is a, a smaller project in my book that goes over that as well. Okay. So um, for anybody who's watching and someone else just asked where they can buy your book. So I'm going to put, I have a link to Ali's current book up on the page on my website where the blog post for this um, episode will be. So I'm going to put that in the notes here, but um, Ali, can you tell us a little bit more about like what you're working on right now and where um, people can find you and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. So they can find me on Instagram. That's the easiest spot Ali K Design. Um, you can buy my book through my website if you want a signed personalized copy or through Amazon. I know Amazon was selling my book for like $7 a while back ago, which is like a still of a deal. It's like crazy. Um, that's almost like wholesale pricing, which is insane. So yeah. Um, I, I and you, I, I know you said you were doing a, a book tour right now. Yeah, so I'm on a book tour right now with my book, my first book, this one. I'll be, I'll, be, I'll have a location in Dallas, and then I'll be in Arizona in November. You can go to my website and look on those exact dates and times and things like that. Um, and then I'll be going on another book tour for my new book, which I have... Yeah, sneak peeks. Uh, sneak peeks. I'll even oh, it's show you so a sneak pretty. Peek of the inside. Woo. Um, but this will be my new book, and it's coming out in December. And I'll be going on book tour in spring. So I'll be announcing those dates hopefully this year, before and by December. So on your book tour, are you teaching, like, workshops yes. and stuff? I'll okay. be teaching out of that book and more tips and questions and all the all the things so I'll be fine. so if anyone is in any of those places they're lucky you're not coming to Canada are you I try to go to so this is like I'm on the end of my first book tour and I try to go to Canada and it's really hard because um you have to have like a license or a certificate or something because I can't sell anything so yeah um, It'd probably be the same if I was to try to come to the States. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I'm trying to figure, figure that out, but eh, I'm trying to work on it, yeah. Uh, someone else is asking if you can talk a little bit about what the new book covers, like compared to the old one. Yeah, so it is a how to draw modern florals again, so there's going to be even more flowers to learn but it'll be broken into chapters. So at the beginning of the chapter will be the flowers and it's step-by-step, -step, pretty similar to how the first book is laid out. And then at the end of that chapter, it's going to be a project. So like wreaths, frames. Um, I'm really known for putting flowers with words. Um, that's a lot of how my murals are started and kind of what I'm known for. So I teach you how to create those compositions and things like that so it's just more project based and what you can do with it outside of just drawing a single flower stems nice. leaves things like that cool cool i think that that answers the question yeah we just got a thumbs up on the video <laughs> um okay so we got your website your instagram you have a podcast too 
I do. Can you talk a little bit about that? That I record with my dad every Saturday. So if you're ever needing business tips or inspiration, um, we talk about what's going on with my life. Um, I've been going to breakfast with my dad every Saturday since I was 13, and it's just kind of been a mentoring session with him. Um, and it's really grown over the years, but now since I have my own business, it's really, we really talk about like the highs and lows and it's always like the high part of my week and the low part of my week. And what did I learn from that and leadership tips and dreams and things that I'm struggling with or highs that I'm going with throughout the week. And we just kind of unload them and talk about them. And we have guests that come on and talk about their stories and things like that. So it's a lot of fun. Very cool. Very cool. I can't say I've had breakfast with my dad in a long time. <laughs> you should go. <laughs> I know. Although we don't have Chick-fil-A. Oh, mm. I know. That's the one. Actually, I think I did see something that they are opening a Chick-fil-A in Canada. I'm not quite sure where. I know Canada is huge, but <laughs> I think it's coming. Eventually. Nice. Yeah, no, I've never even had Chick-fil-A ever. So. Yeah. Mine is uh. by my side. <laughs> Always, eh? <laughs> That's Always. funny. Nice. Okay, well, is there anything else that you want to talk about or tell people or anything exciting in your life? Oh, gosh. No, nothing exciting. Just, yeah. Well, I mean, it's all exciting. It everything, is all exciting. <laughs> this whole face group live thing is exciting. It's my first one. so. This is and, of course, now as we're, like, wrapping up, the quality of this video is completely perfect. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Actually, okay, so selfishly, because this is perfectly clear right now, and I know people had trouble getting on at the beginning because of the way that this was all working. Um, can you do like a two minute speed round version of that poppy again? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Watch it. I'm going to switch it though and watch it like go back. Is it better? <laughs> no, it's still fine. Okay. Yeah. Can you see? Yeah, but you might want to go a little closer if you can. I know the last time it was like right above your hand and it was kind of hard to see at the beginning. So if you like, I don't know what tripod you're using, but if you can angle it a little bit, it's like super perfect. Here? Yeah. Good? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna switch in a different location where, I think I'm upside down, am I? Yes, you are. So I need to be like here. Yeah, that's perfect if you can. I wish I could show you behind the scenes because I'm literally getting on my desk. <laughs> Dedication. Dedication. Okay. All right. Poppy. So we're going to start with the middle. And in the middle of a poppy is like a dome shape. So we start with the C and then we add in these like, I guess a sideways W if you want to look at it that way. And that kind of creates a dome. Then we're going to add the center of the poppy. The poppy is like really kind of hairy in the center. So do a variation of like these oval looking things with straight lines. You can add some like circles. This part looks best when you don't overthink it. When you overthink it, it just looks like crap. <laughs> Try not to cuss. Um, <laughs> I don't consider crap a cuss word. You're good with that one. Uh, <laughs> so then you just add like little tiny ones. Now we're going to add, so we're, this is a view poppy, so we're going to add the petal that is facing us. Since it's that, we'll be seeing the bottom side of the petal. So we're going to the top first. So it's just kind of a wavy line upwards. We're going to connect it down. And we're going to connect the fold. So this is the center. Now we're going to add the other petals. So we're going to start with the petal directly across from this one. 
And that will be our base for these two petals to start and end from. Like so. And then we can extend our center out a little bit. And we kind of lose this center, so we're going to darken it up just a tad to make it pop. So then we're going to add the detailed lines. And the detailed lines, you want to make sure first actually switch pins to the your smaller size pin. And we're going to make sure that every detailed line is starting from the center. So for this petal, we're starting here and going upwards. We don't want to make sure that we're doing a pattern, like a down, up, down, up. So we want to have variations. Like so. And I always tend to kind of start in the middle of the petal and then work my way out. And then keep going. This petal, I mean, this flower looks completely different than the flower that I just drew. So we can make this petal kind of bend. And you do that by adding a dip at the end of our shading line. You see how that's kind of looking like it's bending outwards? Like so. And so like if we get here, a lot of people tend to make their shading lines come out this way. But we always want to make sure that it points back to the center. So it's like an imaginary line back. And then for the fold, or the underside of the petal, we just do tick marks this way. And so I know someone asked of like, how many shading lines do you do? And so if we kind of lose our petals here, so we just add some more shading lines to really make this, these lines pop, or this petal pop to where it looks like it's, it's the petal closest to the center. And there you have it. There's a pop. Beautiful. I mean, I could like keep going all day, but. <laughs> <laughs> I think we could watch you keep going yeah. all day, but yeah. Well, that's perfect. So it, it went blurry for another 10 seconds there, but I think between that one and the one we did earlier, people should be able to get it. <laughs> they got their poppies down. Yeah. Um, so don't throw those out because I'm going to ask you to take a picture of them and send them to us for sure so we can put them in the blog. Um, but yeah, I think um, I think that's about it. And of course, yeah, now it's perfectly not blurry of while course. we're talking. <laughs> um, so if anyone has other questions for Ali, you can keep leaving them in the comments and we can try and get to them later. We'll answer them in the blog post when we post it. And I'll just put that back up on the screen really quick here. Um, and it's not working. There we go. So it's just happyevercrafter.com slash ally dash Koch. And I never knew how to pronounce that, but now I do. I um, yeah. So um, thanks a ton for coming oh on gosh, here. Thank you. I think, um, I think people are going to want to grab your book. I have it here and I use it all the time. <laughs> Love it. Um, but yeah, so I will, uh, I'll get all those pens and stuff from you and get them in a blog post so everybody can follow up and start learning these on their own yeah cool well thanks a lot Ali, and i will uh, i'll talk so to you much. later okay bye thank you thank you bye